And Senator Muir. Thank you, Mr Acting Deputy President. I'm happy to be finally standing here to speak on the second reading of the new Renewable Energy Amendment Bill 2015. I'll start by making a positive mention of the great geographic loca uh, locality uh, we here in Australia are gifted with. Unlike many other countries around the world, we are lucky enough to have a coastline stretching right around us. We have an abundance of sun and heat, with a lot of barren land that could be utilised to uh, create renewable energy into the future. And also, as controversial as it may be, we also have wind, a lot of it, and it becomes pretty clear when speaking to a few people in these halls. There are projects like LMS Energy that extract methane from old tip sites. By burning the methane and creating energy, the methane is reduced to carbon, which is 15 times less damaging uh, to the environment uh, than what it begins as, as uh, in, at the, in the beginning as methane. I was proud to support the retention of ARENA, and I believe uh, that funding into projects, projects such as wave energy are a huge step into a cleaner alternatives than fossil fuels. I have been a consistent supporter of the Clean Energy Finance Corporation as I strongly support the assisted uh, funding to help businesses step into less energy intens intensive practices. Simple measures such as replacing seals in industrial freezers, which help reduce the energy usage right through to projects such as installing solar on rooftops and converting to lead lighting. Since taking my seat uh, in this Senate, I have been a public supporter of the original 41,000 gigawatt hours as it was originally planned to achieve. However, due to the nature of the bill being dragged out, I also understand that at that rate it will be much harder to achieve now than what it would have been if the bill had maintained the bipartisan support uh, that it originally had. I recognise the concerns um, many people have raised within my office in or with my office in relation to the inclusion of native forest wood waste, and I'll get back to that issue in a minute. I will not be supporting any amendments to the legislation that do not have the support of both the major parties, as I do not want this bill to be sent back to the lower house with amendments. I believe this will give some people in government an excuse to delay the deal that has taken so long to achieve already. I have, from day one, uh, said that we need bipartisan support. We saw bipartisan support in the House of Representatives, despite, um, despite Woody Biomass. And I expect to see the ALP sitting with the government, regardless of whether their amendment to the remo removal of Woody, uh, of Woody Biomass is successful or not. I want to make it clear that my decision does not mean that I think that the Senate should be a rubber stamp. However, when it comes to renewable energy policy in this country, enough is enough. Let's get it through and restore investor confidence to any industry that employs thousands of people, both in my state of Victoria and throughout Australia. Now back to the inclusion of biomass. On the 11th of February, during the matter of public importance, I stated that I do support minor amendments such as extending the exemption to any energy intensive industries to 100 per cent and recognising wood waste uh, sourced from sustainably managed forests as an eligible source of renewable energy within the RET. Now this has already happened in the lower house. There has been a lot, and I mean a lot, of misinformation spread around high and low in relation, to the in, in relation to the inclusion of woody biomass from native forest. Firstly, I want to start by pointing out that this is not a new suggestion. As a matter of fact, for 10 years it was included in the renewable energy target, and despite outright lies from the Greens, now Labor, or certain parts of it, or certain factions of it, and extreme environmentalists, did not lead to one extra tree being harvested. As a matter of fact, it only led to one wreck being handed out. I received many emails and phone calls from constituents who are gravely concerned about the so-called destruction of our native forest, and rightfully so. It's not their fault that they have been misled. However, their concerns are about issues that are not necessarily related to the inclusion of woody biomass at all. The inclusion of woody biomass is to include byproducts of current harvesting operations as an eligible source for renewable energy in the target. Byproducts of current um, harvesting operations, not new harvesting operations. Uh, we are speaking about a byproduct that will rot and break down, releasing, releasing carbon or methane into the atmosphere as it currently does if it stays untouched. We are speaking of utilising a byproduct of current <coughs> projects. We are speaking of using a byproduct of current harvesting projects 
We are not speaking of cutting down a single extra tree, not one. Just Senator like Muir, Senator Muir, sorry, Senator Muir, um, it is now 12:45. Your remarks will be in continuation, uh, and we will now move to Senator's statements. Clark. Senator Polly. Thank you, Mr. Business uh, Order of the Day: Renewable Energy Electricity Amendment Bill 2015. Resumption of second reading debate. Senator Muir, in continuation. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I will backtrack just a little bit uh, from where I was on my speech um, uh, to a point where I pointed out that the inclusion of um, woody biomass uh, into the renewable energy target uh, is not a new suggestion. Uh, I pointed out that, as a matter of fact, for 10 years it was included in the RET, and despite outright rise lies from the Greens, now Labor, or certain factions of it and extreme environmentalists, did not lead to one extra tree being harvested, and as a matter of fact, it only led to one wreck being handed out. I've received many emails and phone calls from constituents who are gravely concerned about the so-called destruction of our native forest, and rightfully so, um, but it's not their fault as they have been misled. Um, however, their concerns um, are about issues that are not necessarily um, related to the inclusion of woody biomass at all. The inclusion of woody biomass is to include byproducts of current harvest operations as an illegible source of, renew, uh, of energy in the red. So we're not on about logging or harvesting any extra forest. We're on about utilising biomass that is left over. We are speaking about a byproduct that will rot and break down, releasing carbon or methane into the atmosphere as it currently does, or it gets pushed into windrows and burnt. We are speaking of utilising a byproduct of current harvest projects, we are not speaking of cutting down a single extra tree, not one. Just like it was when woody biomass was included in the RET uh, for 10 years before the Labor Party made an agreement with the Greens. This was a decision that the Labor Party made, to the best of my knowledge, without even consulting with the Forestry Division of the CFMEU. <laughs> Perhaps now is a good time to remind the Labor Party that before I got involved with politics, I was a paid-up union member and what would one would call a traditional Labor voter. Now would be a very good time to remind you of who, or it might remind you, being the Labor Party, of who your traditional voters are. By trying to appease the Green votes, all you're doing is getting a nod of approval from people who are going to vote Green anyway. I would like to point out correspondence that I've received from the CFMEU, where around 30 delegates from within the timber industry have pleaded for the support of their jobs, and to quote, have said. The ALP's proposed continued discrimination of electricity derived from waste, product or byproduct derived from biomass from native forest as an eligible source under the RET is extremely disappointing and unfair. The pro proposal is also without any justification, as it is clear from the regulations that only wood waste from sustainably managed forest is permitted and that electricity generation must not be the driver for harvesting operations. That means that we cannot harvest forests just to create electricity. In support of our jobs, we would appreciate it uh, if you could use your influence to ensure the defeat of the ALP amendment to the bill. I would also like to make a point that a misleading mime on social media is not a fact and, as a matter of fact, can create a lot of unnecessary unrest for those who actually believe what the meme or mime may say but also for those who are employed in an industry who think that their jobs are, on, uh, are going to be axed. I have here a photo that I'm happy to table, if this chamber uh, chooses for me to do so, which shows the extent of what is utilised in the timber industry. In this instant, ash, or Australi Australian sustainable hardwood, Australia's largest hardwood timber uh, mill, a mill which I'm extremely familiar with as I worked there for a number of years, um, this picture highlights how the protection uh, provided from the high value test contributes uh, to ensuring that wood waste will not be a driver in harvest operations. It clearly shows an offcut which is about 50 millimetres by 38 millimetres by about 30 centimetres in length. This is then joined by a finger joiner, and again I've worked in this industry, I've worked in this mill, I've seen it with my own eyes, I know. Um, it's joined by a finger joiner with other similar lengths and turned into high value products products such as floor joists, window components, door components, stair stringers, and a, a huge variety more. 
These products are then sold to manufacturers at set lengths, minimising their waste. So the manufacturers are able to buy a product which is essentially made to size out of waste which has not been burnt for electricity. What waste is then left over is turned into chips and then is sold to Australian paper Merrybale. By ensuring the procurement of Australia paper, we will then ensure that the high value test would still apply on waste. Not by producing Australia paper, we run the risk of seeing Australian manufactured paper and the industry that's supported by it cease, leaving us to rely on products that are imported from countries that do not have our chains of custody uh, from forests that may not be sustainably managed. So if we do not utilise the product or the byproduct of our timber industry and let our timber industry go down the drain, we're still going to be buying products from, timber, uh, from forests from somewhere else that is not managed as good as what we manage our forest here. Some of the sawdust uh, from Australian sustainable hardwood is used to create to create heat to um, operate their kilns to dry the timber. Um, so approximately, if they weren't using that sawdust, which is dry, so it burns very clean, it saves them about four million dollars every year in a gas bill. So we'll be not only having waste product uh, from harvesting, from milling, going to waste and breaking down, the mill would also have a uh, $4 million gas bill. So we would have uh, a product breaking down, releasing emissions and also using emissions to dry the product in the first place instead of utilising what was already there in the first place. The timber industry in Victoria alone, and I mentioned Victoria alone because it's my state, it's where I'm from, it's 21,000 jobs. So that's, that's a lot of people whose jobs are affected if we do not respect what industry we have. And one other point that I'd like to make before finishing is that it's suggested that, um, that woody biomass comes from SES certified forest or certified native, fo native forest. That's all good and fine except for there's not one single native forest that is actually under SES certification. Uh, so for us to move an amendment like that it would essentially be meaning this amendment means nothing. So, in conclusion, uh, I think it's important that we do get the renewable energy target through, like I said at the very start. We just need bipartisan support. We did see it in the lower house, and I would like to see it go through this house unamended, as is, or at least if there's any amendments, has bipartisan support on both sides. Thank you. Thank you, Senator.